Well, given that forward exchange rate, you can set up the math so that forward rate would be the expected value of S1 based on the probability Q and 1 minus Q. Notice that selling Great British Pound a certain, at a certain Euro price is equivalent to buying Euro at a certain Great British Pound price due to the flip side nature of FX transaction. Hello, how are you? Welcome back to International Finance. Risk neutral plus binomial option pricing model will be discussed. Alternative way of getting option value using risk neutral con neutrality concept is there for you. Okay, in risk neutral world, every risky asset is discounted at risk free rate. Okay, in previous section, right? In previous section, the first portfolio. We discounted it at risk-free rate. The portfolio at risk-free rate simply because the portfolio was risk-free, right? We intentionally created a risk-free portfolio in the first discussion of binomial option pricing. In contrast, over here, we are imposing some risk neutrality in the market so that we will be able to discount every risky asset at discount rate only okay very easy world in that sense okay but don't get confused okay it's awfully confusing but don't get confused this risk neutral uh, method is another one okay this uh, in in risk neutral world every risky asset is discounted at risk free rate i told you before why is that the case well, in your discount rate, you have a uh, risk-free rate plus risk premium, okay? That's CAPM kind of world, right? Uh, why do we have this risk premium? Because investors are risk averse. But if investors are risk neutral, then we can forget about that risk premium part, take it out. The only thing remaining will be risk-free rate and you can use it for all kinds of crazy assets okay how can that be possible there is some clearly downstate and upstate and then scary crisis state like what we are having right now right but the risk neutral probability will take care of it probability gets in over here right the scary state probability will be bigger compared to the your subjective probability for risk averse persons that's a magic right um, in the first uh, discussion of the binomial option pricing with the uh, you know uh, delta hedging we did not even consider anything about probability we had just upstate downstate you notice over here did i say anything about the probability no i didn't check anything over here it's clear we still got option pricing good but over here in risk neutral probability we're going to use something that looks like a probability which sums up to one okay which sums up to one q and one minus q we were going to use it and then uh positive numbers probabilities right um so that you will be able to uh, use risk neutral discount rate which is rf anyway um yeah no risk premium the expected return of underlying asset is also risk free rate okay expected return of underlying asset okay um what is that about the expected return or the growth rate of this return okay um s0 to s1 there may be some expected value of s1 okay how does that grow risk free rate growth will be there Upstated, downstate will be there, but on average, S1 will be there. That S1 turns out to be a grown number from S0 by risk-free rate. Okay? Now, uh, so you can figure out the expected value of S1 to be S0 times 1 plus risk-free rate based on S0 and SRF. Wow! Okay, this is a stock but it grows at treasury rate um 
that's risk neutral world okay and then assign probabilities for each state of nature which we will call it q and 1 minus q why is it q well typically real world subjective probability is labeled as p probability but risk neutral world is something imaginary right so that it has to be some alphabet alphabet letters but something close to p that's q so I guess that's why people call it Q. All right. Um, so expected value of S1 should be equal to the probability weighted average of S1 up and down. The probability risk neutral probability weighted up and down. Uh, that should be it. Then solve for Q. You can solve for Q risk f uh, the neutral probability. Okay. Uh, notice that you can figure out call option by discounting the uh, expected value of your call option in state 1 at which rate? Risk-free rate. Again, okay, call option, is it completely risk-free? No, it's risky, but in risk-neutral world, doesn't matter, right? Just discount it at risk-free rate, okay? Um, <clears throat> It doesn't matter because you are near risk neutral and then, you know, no risk aversion. Okay, risk aversion, no risk aversion. Um, no risk premium. Anyway, so call option value today will be expected value of call option in, at the end of maturity, right, C1, discounted at risk-free rate like this, as you see in the l uh, last sentence over here. And then, then how do you figure out this call option's expected value in risk-neutral world? Well, call option up, call option down, again, weighted by risk-neutral probabilities. Yeah, seems familiar. Yeah, over here we had it. But this one was about what? The stock price, S. Whereas this one is about call option. Okay, so that's the basic framework of this risk-neutral uh, probability-based binomial option pricing of call option. Now, both delta hedging method and risk-neutral method discount cash flow at risk-free rate, but for different reasons. Delta hedging, no arbitrage assumption, uh, portfolio that gives identical cash flows across different states of nature should be discounted at risk-free rate in risk-neutral pricing uh, because of the assumption of risk-neutral world. Okay, No risk premium in risk-neutral world. Okay. Um, then how are these two models related? Well, that's, uh, let's see how these two are related. Um, <clears throat> again, this one is largely coming from John, <clears throat> John Hull's textbook. Not ours, but <clears throat> I just uh, write everything so that you don't have to buy John Hull's book. Anyway, <clears throat> if we denote the risk-free rate by R and period as the value of the portfolio will be like this, right? Uh, this is what we had before, right? Binomial option pricing, uh, delta hedging thing, right? Delta hedging thing. And on the way of mathematical, uh, mathematical uh, arithmetic, you're going to see the uh, risk, neutral, risk neutral probability popping up, okay? Um, so as we try to figure out the call value. As we try to figure out the call value, you will see that the risk neutral probability popping up. And then that will show you how these two guys are related. Um, so uh, S0 and then S1 up and down, everything is the same. Initial setup cost is the same, right? Uh, this thing, uh, we already talked about it. So call value should be like this, right? Um, and then move to the next page to explore how it leads to risk neutral probabilities so let's go yeah all right holy cow all right holy cow well you have to familiarize yourself i guess a bit to this kind of mathematical notations and then arithmetic work so call values this is nothing but uh this is just coming from the previous slide okay that's what um 
Shall we move to the previous slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Over here, call value, right? Um, is your uh, stack okay? Taking a long position with delta, and then uh, one minus u times uh, e to the minus power of minus r t, right? Um, and then plus call up, and then e to the power of uh, minus r t, right? Um, this one moves down to the next page like this, and then insert a, or replace a delta with its uh, hedge ratio concept over there, uh, C up, minus C down, and then S up and minus S down like this, and then, and then, please bear with me, just once in your lifetime, S0 cancels each other out, up minus down will remain just like what you see below. Right, and then call up minus down will remain, and then one minus this guy will be the same, the remaining part. And then uh, focus on e to the power of minus rt. This is risk free discounting, right? So focus on this guy and gather together like terms this guy and that guy, right? So it will be call up, right? This guy will come to this place, and then this whole ugly term with u times this delta thing will come down over here. And then uh, the remaining part will be 1 times this delta. Okay? We'll go down there. Now, um, the next line, right? Uh, 1, okay, why did I just leave it 1? Because 1 is multiplying and dividing by the same number. So here is, comes the mathematician's favorite technique. Um, multiplying and dividing by the same thing. But what do you want to multiply and divide by? Well, uh, it seems like we have risk-free discounting. So we want something related to risk-free discounting on this over here. So why don't we multiply and divide by the same thing over here so that it will be like e to the power of rt times e to the power of minus rt, multiplying and dividing by the same thing, which will be 1. And now, once we have it, we are going to uh, gather together like terms once again over there, right? So that's our plan, but before that, right, let's figure out what's going on over here. Now, this guy risk-free borrow, risk-free discounting is still there. Um, and then up minus down, the denominator stays the same. And then, um, so the, what's this? C up, right? C up, this guy has to be like up minus down multiplied by this. Cross multiply it, right? It will be like this. And then what you have on the U will be multiplied by this and that. And minus sign is here, so that's why we have plus over there. Okay? Now, I'm going to delete this one. And so that's how what's going on in this big parentheses. And then the remaining part over here is what I already explained. And you see in this big bracket, in this big bracket, what happens? Is there anything that I can cross out? Um, yeah, actually, this guy cancels each other out. And then... Uh, what is remaining is this guy and that guy. These poor unfortunate guys uh, remain over here and then up minus down in your denominator and then I said gather together like terms like this one so uh, what is going to go into the big bracket will be this guy go in over here. Make sense? Now what do you have? Up minus down and then up minus down. And then, uh, what you're going to do with this? Well, um, the thing is, the thing is, um, we want to, okay, we want to um, summarize this guy with respect to call up and call down. Why? Because we want to interpret this as a probability weighted average of call up and call down. Okay, so in the end, what you're going to do will be uh, obtaining the call option value, 
call option value um, as a this, uh, what's that call option value as a probability weighted average of um, up and down state of call prices discounted at risk free rate and discounted at risk free rate that's this guy always remain over there and then call up and call down is there one state and the other and the remaining part needs some trick like this okay call up and call down it's so complicated oh my god you may say it like that but 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 if you do arithmetic right then you can label this guy okay you can label this guy as q and as it turns out the other guy will be one minus q okay uh, you do the math and you will be able to figure out um, that this one holds true one minus q so in the end our intended goal is achieved okay your call price is nothing but your call price is nothing but the probability weighted average of call up and call down in maturity discounted at risk free rate and this probability that we used is not our subjective probability but risk neutral probability and this risk neutral probability we just called it this way okay um, we just called it this way but um, this shows like this right um, the numerator is something growing at risk free rate okay uh, something growing your stock growing at risk free rate minus down so down uh, the the 90 percent down or something like uh, uh, the compared to 100 percent it is 90 percent like that kind of fraction figure is down and up minus down okay is over here so risk neutral probability is uh, obtained over here now in the previous example okay holy cow the mathematical formula is just killing me well let's throw in some numbers okay um your u will be 1.1 in upstate okay your stock price increased by 10 percent and downstate it decreased by 10 percent 0.9 okay as i said before right if it is d is a fractional number relative to your original stock price now r let's take it 12 percent risk free rate and t one quarter the time period is just a one quarter of your year and then uh, call up value is one and call down is zero which is really directly coming from our previous example of the stock twenty dollars twenty two dollars and eighteen dollars like that right so just stick in those numbers and we can figure out um, the risk neutral probability okay risk neutral probability which will be 0 0.6523 yeah all right so uh risk neutral probability of up is 65 percent or something right risk neutral probability of down will be one minus this guy which will be 34.77 percent all right and call option value of today is uh, shown with this kind of uh, ugly formula that you see oh my god what are those right primarily because of this natural logo over here but this is nothing but risk-free discounting okay e to the power of risk-free rate times t right um so if it is in now uh, what's that uh getting back to our usual uh discounting formula right uh, the same thing divided by one plus r that's this guy okay just continuous compounding versus non-compounding that's the difference okay um now q can be interpreted as a probability of an up movement in stock price the value of the option today is its expected future payoff discounted at risk-free rate okay, risk-free rate and here is an interesting thing interesting thing that is going to be useful in our international finance uh, option pricing in fx market okay what is that well expected value of your stock 
at maturity t, excuse me, by the way, um, that's nothing but your probability weighted average of S1 value, S1 up, S1 down, which is S0 times U, S0 times D, right? So that's this. Um, then it summarizes into this, right? Q times, gather together like terms, right? Q times S0 times up minus down plus S0 down. And since, since the Q is nothing but e to the power of rt minus d over u minus d, you stick this guy in, okay, stick this guy in to this, right, and it becomes like this. E to, uh, expected value of stock price at maturity will be this ugly term times s0 times up minus down, and you, need, you see that up minus down cancels each other out. Okay, fine. And then S0 survives and it multiplies by this guy, e to the power of RT, and then S0 times D minus will be there. And then we know that there is uh, plus S0 times D. So D and D cancels each other out. Make sense? So the only thing survive will be S0 times e to the power of t. Make sense? So expected value of stock at the end of maturity is nothing but today's stock price times e to the power of rt, which means growing your stock at risk-free rate. Did I say it before uh, in risk-neutral pricing? Yes, that's, this is exactly what I told you before. Um, yeah, it shows that the stock price grows on average at risk-free rate in risk neutral world okay not in the real world but in risk neutral world just assume it to grow at the risk free rate okay up and down yeah just assign a bigger probability for down state okay uh, relative top states okay uh, to take care of this risky nature of it but the the only thing that grows the expected growth rate in risk neutral world will be risk free rate we are assuming a risk neutral world when we set the probability of an up movement to um, p or q i would say q the value of the option is e its expected payoff in a risk neutral world discounted at the risk free rate so i need to uh here q right q instead of p eh, doesn't matter that much Anyway, in FX market, okay, this is equivalent to forward rate at the end of maturity based on spot exchange rate, S0. We interpret foreign currency as a stock whose dividend yield is the same as the interest rate of the foreign currency, okay? Uh, for, from Korean's perspective, US dollar is kind of a stock that pays a dividend uh, whose dividend yield would be like, uh, uh, what is it, uh, US uh, risk-free rate okay grows a little bit a little bit well that's kind of a dividend coming from that asset okay um, uh, until now we talked about uh, options on stocks call options how to price it um, binomial pricing and risk neutral pricing based on binomial letters right um, and then uh, Black Scholes, we did not talk about it, but uh, we're going to use it uh, as it is in the at the end of the chapter. Um, and then now we are going to apply this uh, option pricing into foreign exchange context. And this uh, uh, option pricing itself, in and of itself, uh, is a huge discipline. Okay, uh, that requires a separate degree that I said, right? Master's degree in financial engineering, or um, PhD in finance, right? Um, uh, so highly technical, uh, and then a lot of concepts, new concepts are thrown in. So many people give up at this point, okay? And then, oh, oh hell no, okay? Uh, some financial engineers, they will take care of the rest of the field. Um, but I say no, okay? What's the consequence if you give up? Well, we had that 
in 2008 and 9 financial crisis, right? Those mathematicians and financial engineers, right? Presumably they are good at math and then they will do all these uh, problem solvings and all fancy technologies doing this. But in the end, at the crisis situation, they are uh, not able to take care of the situation at all, right? So um, they should be in, under your control. For that purpose, you have to have solid understanding of all these things, right? So um, please, you know, um, keep up and then please uh, bear with me, okay? Let's go. And then foreign exchange market, right? Uh, consider a European currency call option. So here, uh, we are going to introduce the <coughs> call option in FX market. Okay, call option in FX market. The FX between US dollars and British pound, right? British pound and US dollars. Um, and then naturally in this market, you have to think about the interest rate in both markets, US market as well as British market. But here, um, we are interpreting British pound as an asset, underlying asset, and then um, US dollar is the currency that you are valuing the British pound at. So the risk-free rate has to be the US risk-free rate that you're going to use later. And then British, British pound, they must have their own risk-free rate, right? British the central bank's rate, right? The treasury rate, British uh, treasury rate. That is not the discount rate they're going to use in your uh, valuation, but it's going to be treated just like a dividend yield, okay? In uh, when you interpret this into stock option valuation technique. But anyway, we don't even need to consider or the interpretation at this at this initial state right now, okay? So let's see what's going on over here. Here, we are trying to get the boundary of the call option value uh, of the, the right to purchase British pound at a certain strike price E, exercise price E, okay? Uh, what is the lower bound, okay? So here is the information, okay? Consider a European call option, uh, CE between US dollars and British pound. Here, uh, where current exchange rate is S0, dollar over pound. So how many dollars per pound is the exchange rate that we are going to talk about. And exercise price is E, maturity is big T, and US interest rate is uh, I sub dollar, right? And then British interest rate is I sub pound. And two, interest, uh, uh, two states of nature um, will be there, okay, up and down. Uh, where the S sub T, the exchange rate at the end of maturity, will be either smaller than or equal to exercise price, and uh, it will be bigger than the exercise price. Okay, so two states of nature is there. We don't specify over here right now. We don't specify the what the big S sub T is numerically. No, we just have an idea that it will be bigger than or equal to. Or, uh, bigger than E or less than or equal to exercise price. Now we want to consider the pricing boundaries for this option, which is lower bound. Okay, we're going to consider uh, so that we we're going to say call option on this will have to be bigger than or equal to a certain formula. Okay, and that will be close to okay close to the option price formula later on. So we will just have some idea about the lower bound of this call option value in currency market. Now, portfolio, okay, you can consider two different portfolios over here. A lot of different portfolios come up to bother you. Okay, That's another point of confusing um, in option pricing uh, discussion. So portfolio A and B, okay? So portfolio A is purchasing call option and lending an amount equal to the present value of the exercise price E at the US exchange interest rate I sub dollar. And portfolio B is lending the present value of one unit of great British pound at the British interest rate of I sub pound. Okay, so uh, if you think about the cash outflow 
cash outflow that will be this you have uh, on your horizontal axis you have the dates today and maturity date big T all right and then uh, in the maturity date you have two different situations two different states of nature one is recession the other is boom so that the uh, should I say boom or recession well let's simply put it it because this is an exchange rate simply put it that the exchange rate will be smaller than or equal to exchange rate uh, the uh, exercise rate um, and the other case is the exchange rate is greater than the uh, exercise price exercise rate okay so portfolio a right portfolio a you have two securities buy a call and lend the present value of exercise price at interest rate i sub uh, dollars right dollar interest rate so the cash flow that happens for this portfolio must be minus c sub e because you are paying to buy this call right and then um, you're lending your money to other people so it, the cash goes out of your pocket so minus e divided by one plus i sub dollars now what happens in uh, time point t big t right in the case of s sub t being less than the exercise price well would you exercise the option or not you would choose not to okay um whereas uh, when the s sub t is greater than exercise price you uh, you will definitely exercise it and then cash out those benefit which is the payoff which is s sub t minus e will be the cash flow to your call option how about the lending of pva of ae right uh, you lend the money of exercise as much as the exercise price so that at the end of maturity you have to get back that money of e for sure right so e will come into your pocket in any case upside or downside it doesn't matter now uh, <clears throat> what's the cash flow uh, of this whole portfolio well in the beginning of the period this is the cash flow uh, related to this portfolio a and at the at the end of the uh, maturity either e or s of t will be your cash inflow from portfolio a the other portfolio b is a very simple portfolio which is lending the present value of one unit of great british pound right, s of t right divided by one plus interest rate in pound right so what would you have right s of t and in at the end of uh, the maturity right um, and then discount it back um, this one is is independent of the state of nature okay uh, independent of state of nature what, what do you say um, in any case of up and down right you will have s sub t anyway okay i'm not saying that those s sub t will be the same uh in the upside and downside because there will be uncertainty about s sub t that's the whole purpose of having this option and all these kind of things right but what i'm trying to say is the cash flow coming from this lending will be simply uh s sub big t um and then so portfolio payoff right if you compare these two okay oh did, did he, all right if you compare these two with these two in each different state right you see that right portfolio a is better paying or equal pay, equally paying uh, compared to portfolio b in low state in portfolio a and b will be giving you the same payoff in upstate right so portfolio a is dominating portfolio b so we, whose price will be bigger than the other um the idea is clear then the portfolio a should have higher than, higher than or equal to the price of uh, portfolio b right 
So if you in mathematically, well, mathematically, the price of portfolio A should be nothing but this guy. Portfolio A uh, minus one times this guy should be the price of portfolio A. Excuse me. And then minus of this guy should be the price of portfolio B. So um, this relation, inequality relation, should hold. And then that enables us to single out the price of uh, call option. Okay, um, send this guy to the other side of the equation, and then you get the lower bound of call option like this, right? S of t discounted at uh, British pound rate, and then exercise price discounted at US dollar rate uh, minus, right? And also notice that call option value has to be always greater than or equal to zero. Okay, ignoring the transaction cost, by the way, because this is uh, this is a right. Uh, either choose to exercise or not to exercise. It's up to you. Now, so uh, call option price will be greater than or equal to the maximum of these two, zero or this price that you've calculated, lower bound price that you calculated, right? So that's uh, call option values lower bound. And how about put option? Well. If you do the analogous exercise as uh, what we as we done before over here, construct a portfolio, the direction will be the opposite, and then you will see that it's going to be like this formula over here. Okay, lower bound will be like this. Again, maximum uh, maximum function is there. Okay, because this is a right, you can choose not to exercise it. Now recall that IRP or uh, interest rate parity relations. Um, your forward rate, okay, F sub big T, should be equal to current spot exchange rate times interest rate differentials like this. Domestic currency to foreign currency like that, right? You use this relation like this. This means that S sub T divided by 1 plus I sub pound, right, should be equal to forward rate or futures rate over there okay discounted at uh, 1 plus i sub uh, dollars us interest rate or home interest rate okay so you stick it in replace s sub t over 1 plus i sub pound then you will get you will get this maximum of f sub t big t by the way f sub big t um I should say big T uh, minus E discounted at uh, US dollar rate okay uh, and then zero as an alternative and then that's lower bound of call option how about put option it's the other way around the maximum value uh, between zero and uh, E minus F sub T discounted at US interest rate your home, home currency interest rate okay so that's how you can estimate the uh, lower bound of your option values, right? Okay, and then binomial option pricing. Uh, let's go for an example. Imagine a world where a spot exchange rate between US dollar and euro right now is $1.5 per euro today, and in the next year, S of 1, US dollar to uh, the, the euro will be either 1.8 or 1.2. So upstate or downstate is there. And you got 10,000 euros, right? 10,000 euros will change from 15,000 US dollars to either 18,000 or 12,000 US dollars, right? In the future, okay? A call option on this 10,000 euro will uh, with strike price of 1.5 uh, US dollar per euro exactly the same as current exchange rate right and this will this call option will pay off either what three thousand dollars or zero right because upstate and downstate upstate you will exercise the option so that the difference between your uh, market price and the strike price okay strike price 
uh, which will be $3,000 will be your call option value. In the downside, down state, you don't exercise the option, right? <clears throat> so the option value will be zero. So if, okay, um, if the spot exchange rate in at maturity will be is $1.8 per euro, the option is in the money since you can buy uh, 10,000 euro, which is worth $18,000 at um, uh, this exchange rate for only 15,000 US dollars. So you have a $3,000 gain, right? Call option value will be $3,000 in upstate, zero in downstate. And pictorially, okay, if I draw a picture or diagram, uh, it will look like this. Uh, 10,000 euros, right, is worth 15,000 US dollars today, but next year, it's going to be either it's going to be either 18,000 or 12,000 and then the call option is the strike price is $15,000 so the call option value in the upstate will be 3,000 downstate is uh, will be uh, zero okay now um, <clears throat> we can replicate the payoffs of the call option by taking a long position in a bond with a future value of 5,000 uh, euros along with the uh, uh, right amount of dollar denominated borrowing. In this case, the borrow, uh, the, borrow the present value of 6,000 US dollars. The portfolio payoff in one period matches the option payoffs. Here, we are using the concept of what? Option delta. And remember uh, the, the, uh, the replicating portfolio that replicates the payoff of the call option, right? Payoff of the call option. We are creating a, uh, this, uh, what's that, homemade portfolio to replicate the cash flow of this call option, okay? Remember the delta, delta hedging was there. And then for that, you had to uh, go for long in a stock, a delta shares, and then short or borrow okay risk free okay repaid risk free so that was the uh, idea of uh, replicating portfolio uh, we are doing it again in um, fx market right so what you have over here you can just ignore this part 15000 right um, because this is the original amount but what we show over there is the cash flow coming from this portfolio okay portfolio replicating portfolio um, 3000 and then zero right and then this uh, turns out to be the same as call option price in each state associated with $15,000 uh, call option right but this is a replicating portfolio okay associated with Delta associated with Delta and Delta will be half of it okay half uh, Delta will be half. I stated up front, but you're going to see it later. Let's see. And then <clears throat> the replicating portfolio's uh, dollar cost today is the sum of today's dollar cost of the present value of 5,000 euro less uh, the cash inflow from borrowing the present value of 6,000 US dollars. So uh, when okay, risk-free borrowing is happening over here, okay, Okay, risk free. The present value is given over here, and then uh, we are buying the delta times the uh, stock amount, right? Uh, so, so when the uh, the what is it? The current exchange rate is 1.5 dollars per euro, and interest rate on U.S. dollars is 7.1, and then euro interest rate is 5%. Uh, the biggest amount a willing buyer should pay for the call option is 1540.62 that's what it uh, would cost him today to build a portfolio uh, that perfectly replicates the option payoffs um, so uh, if you stick in those numbers right uh, let's see um, 5,000 and then five percent so da, da, da. where is that 
Uh, okay. So, 5,000 euro, 1.05 times 1.5 dollars per euro. Okay, minus 6,000 and then 1.071. Okay, should be what? Um, um, 5,000 divided by 4761.90 times 1.5 minus 6,000 divided by 1.071. One. That's 5602.24. Can you see this? Okay. Now, um, this guy should be uh, 4761.90 times 1.5714285 minus 5602.24. That's 5602.24. Fifteen forty point six one, right? So, uh, or six two with some rounding error doesn't matter that much. Okay, so the biggest amount a willing buyer should pay for the call option is um, fifteen forty point six two dollars. That's what it would cost him today to build a portfolio that perfectly ref replicates the call option payoffs. Uh, why pay more to buy a ready-made option okay homemade portfolio okay homemade call option is there for you now um, we replicated the payoffs of the call option with a levered position in the underlying asset in this case borrowing 56.02 right um, to buy 47 uh, 47.61.9 euro at the spot, okay? Um, this guy. The hedge ratio of an option, of the option, is a ratio of change in the price of the option to the change in the price of the underlying asset. So H, hedge ratio, or delta that I showed you before, right? Uh, should be so the call option up minus call option down divided by stock up minus stock down or the ex exchange rate up exchange rate down okay and then um, here on the last one equation over here I just represented with uh, mathematical notation of delta of C uh, because it has a connotation with the first derivative with respect to um, S okay first derivative um, iltamibun kind of things right this ratio gives the number of units of the underlying asset we should hold and the amount of borrowing in order to create a replicating portfolio now this replicate uh, the practice of uh, constructing a riskless hedge is sometimes called delta hedging the hedge ratio of a call option is positive uh, recall from the example and uh, in this exercise, the hedge ratio turns out to be half, right? Because the call price changes by ha uh, the well, 3,000, whereas the change in, um, change in the exchange uh, amount okay, uh, switches by about 6,000. So it's uh, 1 over 2 or half, right? The hedge ratio of a put option is negative because put up will be zero put down will be something positive so zero minus positive will be minus usually usually okay these hedge ratios change through time okay um all right the not just usually but all the time by the way yeah of course um Currency futures options are options on a currency futures contract 
Exercise of a currency call futures option results in a long futures position for the holder of a call or the writer of a put. Exercise of a currency put futures options results in a short futures position for the seller of a call or the buyer of a put. Obviously, because put is the right to sell. It has to re be related to short position. Uh, if the futures position is not offset prior to its expiration, foreign currency will change hands. Okay. Now, um, let's go. Calculating the hedge ratio. Okay, this uh, this one uh, we have also. Uh, we are, we are going to go through risk neutral pricing. Okay, risk neutral pricing for FX options is also possible, right? I told you before. Either uh, risk neutral or um, delta hedging. Okay, uh, those two methods are there. Risk neutral methods over here in FX uh, options. Calculating the hedge ratio is uh, vi vitally important if you are going to use options. The seller needs to know the hedge ratio if he wants to protect his profits or eliminates his downside risk. The buyer needs to know the hedge ratio to decide how many options to buy. Um, knowing what the hedge ratio isn't especially important if you are only trying to value options. Risk neutral valuation is a very handy shortcut to valuation. Okay, so textbook okay explicitly uh, uses only the risk neutral method. For the numerical example, uh, let's go through this risk neutral, neutral pricing of FX option. Okay, call option. Uh, U.S. dollar versus euros, right? Um, using the risk neutral probabilities framework, we can safely assume that IRP holds in between these two currencies, right? So, um, seven point one percent for U.S. interest rate and five percent interest for uh, euro regime, right? and then spot exchange rate of 1.5. All this information enables us to compute forward exchange rate of $1.53 per euro as you see in this screen over here. Okay, what is this about? This is the expected value of your uh, euro per, uh, per euro, right? Dollar value of per euro uh, at the end of maturity. You can think of it as uh, the stock price at the end of maturity, okay, which you can safely discount it at risk-free rate later on in risk-neutral framework, okay. So this is the future value of your exchange rate, okay. Your best guess of future exchange rate 1.53 using interest rate parity relation. Good. Now 1.53. How many unit of uh, euro currency do you have? 10,000 euros. So multiply this thing. Uh, 15, what's that? 1,300 euro will be it. Now, um, let's see. So you have this binomial tree over here, uh, or chopstick maybe, and then um, 15,000 US dollars worth, right? Right now, the asset is euro. And then it can be going up or down, 18,000 or 12,000, either case up or down. And then, uh, just to be fair, okay, the expected value is 1.53, okay, uh, or 15,300 uh, US dollars for this 10,000 euro asset. Set the value of 10,000 euro, bought forward at 1.53. Uh, dollars per euro equal to the expected value of the two possibilities shown above 15,300 uh, dollars okay for this euro asset should be okay equal to should be equal to the probability weighted average of these two euro asset okay upstate euro value downstate euro value in terms of US dollars right the asset that you have is euro. The currency that you represented has to be US dollars, right? So upstate or downstate, okay? Probability Q and one minus Q, take the weighted average, the expected value based on it should be what is given by the forward rate, okay, forward rate, okay? Um, now, 
Solving for Q gives the risk neutral probability of an up movement in the exchange rate. So if you do it, it's going to be uh, 0.55 or 11 over 20. So if we move down, well, now we can value the call option as the present value, uh, present value discounted at the US risk free rate of the expected value of the option payoffs calculated using the risk neutral probabilities. So um, each state you have option value 3000 and 0 and you have risk neutral probabilities to cross multiply this guy and that guy. Multiply anything by 0 is 0 and the other part is remaining right and then once you uh, cal calculate the weighted average of these call values don't forget to discount it at US risk-free rate or your home currency's risk-free rate okay people always get some points off by forgetting about this I mean there are infinitely many ways of differentiating yourself but this is one negative way of differentiating okay so uh, I don't suggest you to forget about this okay uh, don't forget okay then the call option value that you can calculate is 1540.62 dollars and is that the same as the number that we calculated before in the previous exercise with binomial uh, delta hedging process right delta hedging method let's see 1540.62 voila and you have it over here right and then 1540 right so that's identical number that you get right in risk neutral framework or that uh, uh, binomial option pricing uh, with delta hedging you get the same result now the value of a call option on 10,000 euros with a strike price of 15,000 US dollars is 1540.62 okay uh, but there is a duality nature of call options and put options in FX currency market why because this this is a flip side of the other currency right uh, your call option to buy euro okay based on your US dollar currency is equivalent to a put option to sell US dollars based on euro currency make sense right the flip side flip side of the same coin right um, so the value of a put option on 15,000 US dollars with a strike price of 10,000 euros is also the same price 1540 dollars and 62 cents okay um, if the option finish in the money they have the same cash flows so they should have the same value today right so this is a nice way of checking whether your previous calculation was correct or not okay uh, you just have to flip it okay so test your intuition right so how do we test it test our intuition well use risk neutral valuation to find the value of a put option on 15,000 US dollars with a strike price of 10,000 euros. Now hint is that the, given that we just found out the value of a call option on 10,000 euros with a strike price of 15,000 to be 1540.62 dollars. This should be easy to uh, easy in the sense that we already know the right answer. Uh, let's check it. Okay, as before. US dollar interest rate 7.1 percent euro interest rate 5 percent uh, spot exchange rate 1.5 dollars per euro forward exchange rate well 1.53 dollars per euro right um, then what do you have to do well um, here it's the same a binomial tree diagram is shown over here and then um, we just have to take the inverse of the, uh, the FX rate, all the FX rate, instead of 1.53, we have 1 over 1.53. 
So if you multiply it by the US dollar amount that you have, 15,000, then you will get a euro amount of 9803.92 euros, right? So, and then this amount, right? This amount should be your expected uh, dollar asset, value of dollar asset in euro currency, okay? At the end of maturity. At the end of maturity, I, no, again, at the end of maturity, you will have uh, 9803.92 uh, euros worth. And this one has to be the expected value uh, of upside and downside outcomes uh, with the uh, risk neutral probability. Okay, now um, risk neutral probability. Um, the tricky thing over here is that the risk neutral probability that you calculate on this exercise will be different from the risk neutral probability that you calculated in the previous exercise. In the previous exercise, um, converting okay, uh, converting into euros, right? Starting from dollar to converting into euros and the uh, uh, risk neutral probability was 11 over 20. But over here, the risk neutral probability will be different from that, okay? Now, <clears throat> if you set up the math like this, how did you set up this one? Well, uh, upside and downside. Well, because this is a put option, I flipped the trees, right? I flipped the trees so that when it is down for US dollars, it is up for Euro. So 1.2 dollars per Euro, flip it. So it is going to be what? Uh, 0.833 or something. And then you multiply it by 1500 US dollar, uh, 15,000 US dollars, you will get uh, 12,500 Euro amount in the up, upside of the tree, upside branch, right? Downside branch or downside chopstick, what do you have, right? Uh, we have 1.8 dollars per Euro, flip it then 1 over 1.8 and now you multiply it by 15,000 US dollars that will give you 8,333.34 um, euros right so this is downside and that is upside okay uh, Q and then uh, 1 minus Q all right so 1 minus Q you take the weighted average of it and the solve for Q and that's going to be this guy. Okay, that's 6 over 17. Okay, 6 over 17. And this is obviously different from the risk neutral probability of this case in the previous um, exercise. Okay, the flip side exercise, right? Um, there it was like 9 over 20, but over here is like 6 over 70. Okay different risk neutral probability does it matter does it bother to you no this is just purely math mathematical exercise to justify this is purely mathematical exercise to justify your usage of discount rate okay usage of risk free rate as your discount rate in the final state final state what now you have this risk neutral probability for each state of nature okay what you simply have to do is cross multiply the call option value at the end of uh, each different state. Zero and 1666.67 euros, right? Well, how do we calculate the 1666 uh, uh, euros? Well, we are just uh, multiplying the, uh, uh, the, the payoff of call option, okay, by the exchange rate over here, okay? Um, yeah, 8,000, um, 8,000, uh, 333 euros, right? Um, your call option value is what? Call option value, uh, strike price, okay? The payoff is call option, strike price is 10,000 euros, right? Strike price of 10,000 euros. You get the difference. That will be 1666.67. That's your put option payoff. Put option payoff. Now you use this guy into your risk neutral valuation of put option value. And then take the weighted average and then discount it at 
euro currency discount rate five percent this time okay your currency is discount rate then you get 10 uh, 27.08 euro and then once you multiply 1.5 which is the exchange rate spot exchange rate today you're going to end up with 1540.62 us dollars which is the value of your call option the put option put option in the and you remember the call option value in the previous section was previous exercise was the same okay we are checking our intuition ah voila the call option to buy euro from us dollars is the same as the put option to sell us dollars uh, based on your euro currency okay the value should be the same identical okay that's what we find good uh, now risk neutral valuation practice okay here is one more example and I extensively take you through through a um, uh, rigorous approach okay uh, to think about the similar question um, here okay this is the exchange currency market between euro and pound okay British pound and euro okay use risk neutral valuation to value a put option on 8000 pound with a strike price of uh, 10000 euros okay 10000 euros so spot exchange rate pound per euro is 0.8 um, pound interest rate is 15.5% and euro interest rate is 5% in the next year there are two possibilities okay so the pound to euro will either go up to one or uh, 0.75 pound per euro so three steps okay step zero carefully figure out which is the underlying asset and which is the currency to price it okay it's always confusing if it is a stock the underlying asset is just the stock and the uh, the currency unit is obviously you know is given there but in fx both are currencies so which one is the asset which one is the currency unit will be confusing to you okay so step zero carefully figure out which is the underlying asset and which is the currency to price it step one calculate risk neutral probabilities and step two calculate option value as the present value of the expected value of the option payoffs okay so let's go uh, step zero carefully figure out which is the underlying asset and which is the currency to price it um, let me expand and um, take a deep breath and relax and read the statement carefully again and then again and again until you are clear about it no rush okay no rush haste makes waste uh, if it said value a put option on 8000 pound with a strike price of 10000 euro okay the underlying asset is british pound 8000 okay and the currency to price it is euro okay so even though the spot exchange rate is given as pound per euro you need to convert it into euro to pound interest uh, the, the, uh, the, the fx rate okay so 0.8 pound per euro well flip it that's 1.25 euros per pound okay you're going to use use this thing and also you need to convert all the s1 spot exchange rate into euro per pound okay because pound is just an asset euro is the currency unit that you're going to use right so s1 um one to one right one pound to one euro that's just simple one uh the other case 0 0.75 pound per euro well that's just flip it and it becomes what 
uh, 1.3334, right? Right? Um, so flip it. Don't forget to flip it, okay? Now, what? You see how to set up a binomial tree for the problem or chopstick, right? And so, uh, starting point, 1.25 euro per pound. Ending point, you have two points, two nodes, 1.3334 euro per pound or one euro per pound, up versus down, okay? Um, so the value of pound asset may go up or may go down. Uh, notice that the strike price happened to be uh, 1.25 um, euro per pound as well in this problem, which means that the option is at the money today, okay, at the money today. Um, step one, finally, okay, calculate risk neutral probabilities, set up a risk neutral probability Q and one minus Q, right? So, uh, but to give, uh, f to figure out Q, you need to figure out the forward rate of euro per pound um, that satisfies IRP. For this purpose, uh, you can draw IRP diagram if you don't remember precisely, like this, right? This is a refresher of chapter six, right? Uh, forward rate should be spot rate times one plus your currency divided by one plus foreign currency and 5% and 15.5% are given as uh, those interest rates and then the spot exchange rate 1.25 you got it then you can calculate 1.13636 euro per pound okay that is your expected value of fx rate um, euro per pound uh, next year okay so uh, what do you do well given that forward exchange rate you can set up the math so that forward rate would be the expected value of S1s based on the probability Q and 1 minus Q. All right. Um, so 1.13636 should be equal to 1.3334 euro per pound times Q and then plus 1 euro per pound times 1 minus Q. And the Q should be, if you do the math, you will see that it is 0 0.409. Some of you may question, oh, in previous example, it was the, uh, we were using the uh, currency amount, like uh, 10,000 euros or 15,000 15, US dollars or 15,300 US dollars equals certain thousand uh, US dollars times Q and certain thousand US dollars times one minus Q. Why don't you do it, convert it into the whole Euro amount, okay, for all these things? Well, uh, here you can do the same, okay, but it will cancel each other out, okay? We are just, uh, you, all there, okay, was just uh, multiplying uh, 15, uh, what, what's that? 10,000 euros for everything. Over here, you just multiply it by uh, the same uh, 8,000 pounds or something, you'll get the same results, uh, canceling each other out so that the Q will be the same. So if it is going to be the same, why don't we work with this exchange rate to figure out the Q, okay? Because this is a smaller number and then simpler number, hopefully, so that we will be able to uh, figure out the Q easily, okay? So that's it. Um, now we figured out Q and 1 minus Q, write it down in your diagram, then what do you do? Um, remember the figure out, to figure out the uh, put option value in state, up state and down state in time 1. Okay, In up state, put option value will be 0 because the exchange rate is higher than <coughs> the exercise rate. In excuse me, down state, you will have to uh, exercise the put option and then get the benefit of it. What's the payoff? Well, 0 0.25 euro per pound. Okay. Now uh, you got the uh, 
count uh, the, the put option value in each state in time one and then you got the probabilities now what do you do well take the expected value of your put options right didn't we get the uh, expected value before yeah that was the expected value of your exchange rate now what you have to calculate is the expected value of your put option once you compute the expected value of put option the only remaining thing is to discount it at your currency's risk-free rate over here uh five percent rate because you are valuing everything in terms of euro dollar euro values right euro currency um and then euro risk-free rate okay discounted and so that you end up with 0 0.1407 euro per pound okay notice you have 8000 great british pound as underlying asset so multiply this 8000 pounds by this put option value per pound so the aggregate amount will be computed which is 1125.71 euro okay so this is the put option value okay in terms of euro amount if you want to obtain the value of this put option in terms of great british pound you just have to do one more step which is multiply the spot exchange rate of 0.8 okay so in the end you will get 900.57 pounds uh, okay like this um, so that's that notice notice that selling great British pound a certain at a certain euro price is equivalent to buying euro at a certain great British pound price due to the flip side nature of FX transaction. So a put option of selling great British pound 8,000 at euro 10,000 is equivalent to a call option of buying 10,000 euro at 8,000 great British pound. So the values of these two options should be identical, the same. Okay, so you can check your previous work by calculating equivalent call option value. Okay, let's do it. Don't stop, right? Uh, don't stop the party, baby, right? So check your work by finding the value of an at the money one period call option on 10,000 euro with a strike price of 8,000 pound. Okay, so the exchange rate is given 0.8 and interest rate 15.5 percent per pound and five percent per euro i'm sorry there's a typo uh, yes euro okay do you see that i should i say bigger euro okay not pound um and then forward exchange rate should be 0 0.88 using interest rate parity relation okay so that's gonna be like what um 0 0.8 times what one plus one plus this is pound so pound interest rate uh 15 0.5 percent which is going to be 0 0.155 okay and then here five percent foreign currency okay euro right that's gonna be this guy 0 0.88 right um in the next year there are two possibilities right two possibilities one is one pound per euro or the other is 0 0.75 pound per euro so euro value going up euro value going down okay starting from today's value okay so that's that step zero what did i say carefully figure out which is the underlying asset and which is the currency to price it take a deep breath relax you can do it. 
and read the statement carefully again and again and again until you are clear about it and it said value a call option on 10,000 pound euro with a strike price of 8,000 pounds so the underlying asset is 10,000 euro okay and the currency to price it is pound so you already have to all you need okay you, so you already have all you need okay so exchange rate is all written in the way that you want it okay uh, dollar per euro dollar per euro dollar per euro let's just see it now draw a chopstick diagram okay now you see how to uh, set up a binomial tree for the problem i sh i should say chopstick yep chopstick binomial eh chopstick okay so chopstick cake takes care of the eating whatever it may be you can pick it so oh, that's good so notice that the strike price happened to be 0.8 pound per euro as well in this problem which means that the option is at the money today now uh, step one calculate risk neutral probabilities set up risk neutral probabilities as q and one minus q for up and down state of nature okay remember this q and one minus q this uh, risk neutral probabilities will be different from the risk neutral probabilities that you calculated in the previous question uh, previous question okay um so but to figure out q you need to find find out the forward rate that satisfies irp for this purpose draw an irp diagram okay and then do it 0 0.88 we already already calculated all these things right and then then set up risk neutral probabilities and then figure out all these things um do the math right um 0 0.88 um forward exchange rate okay 0 0.88 forward exchange rate should be the weighted average of these two okay weighted average of these two weight should be these guys right so that's the idea and then figure out q 0 0.52 and then which means 1 minus q should be 0 0.48 right and then now notice the different difference of the risk neutral probability even though it is the same question flip side of it put option call option okay risk neutral probability that you assign will be different because this risk neutral probability is just a mathematical exercise to justify your usage of risk free rate as a discount rate in the future uh, at the final stage okay now um step two calculate the option value as the present value of the expected value of option payoffs figure out put option value at t1 for each state of nature so in up state would you exercise this um oh this is a call option i'm sorry uh figure out the call option yeah call option value right uh, did I say put option before as well? Sorry, it's all call option in this one. Okay, call option. Uh, as I said before, call right. Call um, each state of nature. So in upstate, you are going to exercise it, right? Because the exchange rate is one instead of zero point eight, right? Exercise it. So the benefit will be zero point two. Uh, downstate are you going to exercise your call option ever no zero okay so based on these call option values and risk neutral probabilities um, you can compute the expected value of your call option okay I should have said call okay call up and down and then that gives me um, this right and then don't forget to discount it at British pound rate because right now we are uh, our underlying asset is euro our 
currency unit is pound, so pound interest should be our discount rate, 15.5%. So what do we have? The put up uh, the call option value. Call option value should be 0 0.09004 pound per euro. And that's not the end because we had not just one euro, but how, how many euros? 10,000 euros. So we have to multiply this guy by 10,000 euros, which is this happening over here. Right? So in the end, the call option value is 900.43 British pounds. And if you want to obtain the value of call option in terms of euro, you just have to divide it by 0 0.8. Okay, which is spot exchange rate. Okay, it will give you 1125.71 euros, right? And is this the call option value that we calculated before? And the answer is yes, they are the same. Da da da, over here. Yeah, over here, 1125.71, 957. Um, over there. Yeah, there are some rounding errors, but not important, okay? Um, so that's that. Things to be careful about. Convert future values from the currency to another using forward exchange rates and convert present values using spot exchange rates, discount future values to present present values using the correct interest rate. Discount dollar amounts uh, and uh, I, I interest rate of euros. Um, yeah, to find the risk neutral probability, set the forward price derived from IRP equal to the expected value of the payoffs calculated using Q and solve for Q. To find the option value, discount the expected value of the option payoffs calculated using the risk neutral probabilities at the correct risk-free rate, okay? Um, finally, finally, the last page of the textbook, Black Scholes Merton model. Oh my God. Okay, um, Black Scholes formula for the price of a European call and a put option written on a currency uh, look like this. Holy cow, you will say, okay? Uh, so much complicated, you may say it, or over here, okay, right, what, where's my pen over here, right, good, uh, so let's go, C stands for call option, okay, stands for call option, let me expand my face, big face, yes, okay, call option, P stands for put option, okay, and then um, you have, in, let's focus on call option first, okay? Call option, you have two ugly terms, this and that, is minus, okay? Something minus something. And the first thing involves some S, which has to do with the uh, underlying assets price, S, or stock or exchange rate, okay, in the market. S0 is like today's spot market, but you're doing something about it. And then minus, minus, um, what is it? The uh, exercise price, right? Intuitively, call option at the end of the maturity is like what? S1 minus C kind of things. And this, if you look about, uh, take a step back and look at it, right? Okay, let me see this. C is S T minus exercise price. Okay, exercise. What am I doing? Yeah. So this one, uh, call value, should be something minus exercise price in call option value in the future. You have to discount it back to today, C0. 
So that's this guy, okay? Um, discounting this exercise price, right? At risk-free rate in your currency, all right? And over here, this is growing your stock with some probability randomness using normal distribution, by the way. And so it's going to be like a, a stock price incorporating kind of a dividend kind of things uh, over there. Okay, because whenever there is a dividend, your uh, the stock price goes down. Pedangnak happens, right? So your future stock price goes down as much as there is a dividend yield going on. So uh, that's why it is minus over here. But in terms of foreign currency, FX market, your foreign currency's interest rate is just like a dividend payment, okay, from the stock. So that's why it is eroding your value, okay? Um, so that's what's going on. And then N over here, okay, holy cow, what is that? That is normal distribution function. You remember, you remember this one? E Gaussian function, right? And then, what was that? Here, the uh, average is zero, and the, uh, the what's that? The uh, standard deviation is one. Okay, standard deviation is one. And that was the normal distribution function. Okay, and then not only, this is a uh, normal distribution's probability density function. But this one is about the uh, area function, which is called the distribution function. Uh, so take the integral of, uh, uh, shall I scare you? Okay, fine. Um, it's like a, take the integral from minus infinity to a certain uh, value, okay? So normal distribution up until a certain area you take the area of it, can compute the area of it. Well, that's uh, d, 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 2 pi. Remember that? e to the power of what? 1 ma, uh, d, 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 uh, e bune x squared, right? And then dx. This is n function, getting the area based on the normal density function okay luckily unfortunately okay all these things are done in the computer right the excel has this kind of functionality so don't worry about it okay just to pictorially show you what the heck is going on okay now uh it's it's like a call option value is like a um, stock price minus exercise price and this exercise price and then stock price, okay, let's get the present value of it somehow. And then there will be some randomness associated with it, okay, randomness of the stock price, and then uh, the discount rate itself, well, and then the randomness of the stock price, okay. All the things are incorporated into this, the probability density function, okay. Put option is the other way around. Exercise price minus your future um, spot exchange rate or forward exchange rate okay and then uh, you need to discount it again at your country's risk-free rate okay that's what's going on you see that um exercise price minus stock price at the, this is p remember this idea roughly this idea is going on if you look at these two ugly terms and discount it somehow right now uh d1 okay and d2 looks like this right um that part i'm not going to talk about it okay it's just relatively how your uh, final okay final forward rate will be or final spa stock price will be compared to your exercise price okay you want it to be higher right you will go up higher and there will be some randomness associated with it the randomness the volatility of your stock return or exchange rate return uh, exchange rate volatility and more volatility will happen okay as you have more time to wait okay um, so that's basic intuition going on more volatility 
uh, will happen as we have more time to maturity. And then that will increase this D value. Okay, of course, there is a discounting factor like this. But anyway, um, so incorporate this randomness into the normal distribution function and then compute the call option and put option value. That's uh, Black Scholes formula, how things are formulated. And um, the thing is, the thing is, um, use the European option pricing formula to find the value of six months call option on Jap Japanese yen. Okay, the strike price is one, uh, 100 yen per dollar, and the volatility is 25% per annum per year, right? Per year, and then uh, US dollar interest rate 5.5%. Japanese yen interest rate, um, 6%. So, how do we calculate all these things? Well, um, first you need to figure out the uh, forward exchange rate. Forward exchange rate based on this um, information. And forward exchange rate, what the heck is going on over here? You may say it. But, take a deep breath and uh, look at it again okay and you cannot see it and to take a deep breath step back and come back and see it okay forward interest rate what did we have before s sub t one plus r sub uh was it um one plus right r sub foreign currency and the other is your foreign currency and domestic currency right right so um, then if you look at this guy and that guy okay a uh, similar thing is this one okay and then awful thing is this one right what do you see well this one e to the power of r dollars is this guy in continuous time manner. Did you see that? Right? In math refer refresher, you had this one. And the uh, awful creature over here is what we had as 1 plus r yen over there. Right? Something, something, holy big thing. And then this one. Right? And over the period of t times, right? t years. Right? Ah, right so that's this guy t period so understandable right so we are just working with the exponent of natural log e instead of working with this fractional figure so punch in your interest rate uh, US interest rate 5.5 percent and Japanese interest rate 6 percent right and then times 0 0.5 because this is six months and then raise it to the power of this, uh, e to the power of this, and then divide it by 100. So this is your forward exchange rate, okay? 100.2503 Japanese yen per US dollars. Now, D1 and D2, okay? You have to stick in all, all these things. F, okay? Foreign exchange, the, the forward exchange rate, stick it in, and then exercise price okay strike price excuse me right so this guy okay one over 100 you just have to be consistent right uh, and then 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times um, 25 percent squared so this is times right 0 0.5 times a uh, quarter squared times the big T, okay, uh, half a year, okay, and then again, volatility times square root of time, okay, and then if you punch in in your calculator um, all these numbers, right, or your computer and Excel spreadsheet, you will be able to calculate all these things, but um, uh, right, right, right. And then, um, 
I was wondering whether I should punch in the ln figure over there, natural log, right? That you see over here. Okay. Um, so how would I do it? Let's do it. Okay. One over the numerator will be one over. Oh, instead of doing the whole thing like that, it's going to be like what? Um, one point two five zero three over one hundred ln it's going to be like this because the denominator of the denominator should be numerator and then the denominator of the numerator should be denominator complicated confusing yeah but this is it so um 100 okay 100 divided by 100.2503 okay all uh, right should be equal to this guy right point nine nine should i increase the size of it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. hello right so 0.9975 will be the number in, uh, inside the parentheses and then what you need to do is punch in the ln over here punch in the ln uh, over here right ln gives you minus 0 0.0025 make sense yeah hello oh yeah okay <coughs> excuse me so, um, yeah, that's what we got. Zero point, minus 0 0.0025, as you see it. And then the others, uh, 0 0.5 times, okay, this guy squared, and all these things will be 0 0.156, and then this, and goes into this, right? And then you will find out D1, okay? And D2 will be like d1 minus sigma squared of t and square root of t right and will be this and then you will have to stick it in to your normal distribution function okay normal distribution function uh, in excel you will have norm dist function here do we have normal distribution function unfortunately no 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 okay so for this part black scholes formula needs a normal distribution table or excel okay so that's that and then um you stick this guy into that stick this guy into that and then can do the calculation and then you will be able to figure out the call option price which is 0.6137 cents okay um yeah so that's that now all right summary forward futures and options contracts are de uh, derivative securities their values is derived from the value of the assets that underlies these securities and then forward and futures contracts are similar instruments but there are differences standardization right mark to market and then margin calls uh, will be there okay um it's very uh something you can read off yourself a futures market requires speculators and hedgers right hedgers uh, attempt to avoid the risk of price changes of the underlying asset and the speculators attempt to profit from the anticipating the direction of future price changes right so hedgers right um, um, want it to be risk-free okay wants to be risk-free uh, perfect hedging hedge ratio all these things but hedge fund right has been using this word hedge in their naming their title so much so that it gives you some miscommunication with a uh, misconnotation so that when when people say hedge just you, you seem to you know 
uh, recognize it with like high risk taking. No, not really. Actually, hedge funds, they should be labeled again as speculator funds, right? They are not doing hedging. Instead, they are doing speculating even more. And then, um, so that's one of the ironies in this finance world anyway. So summary, just you can just enjoy reading it. Okay, so this is the end of chapter seven. Quite a long and intensive discussion uh, involving a lot of math and economics, right? I understand it must be painful to you. Must have been painful. If it is not painful to you, you're it's something wrong with you, okay? Uh, because this is business school in the first place, right? Um, quite natural. If you are feeling uncomfortable and then uneasy, feeling that you are screwed or something, don't worry. You are not alone, and I am here with you. So ask me question. So and then also your students, or your peers are also screwed together, no matter what. So rest assured. But make sure keep your hands busy, working the numbers. And also think clearly about which is underlying asset, which is the uh, currency unit that I am working on. Okay, In, when it comes to FX, it's going to be awfully confusing, right? Euro versus pound, pound versus dollar, dollar versus Korean won, Korean won versus Japanese yen. Which one would be the uh, asset that I'm interested in, and which one would be the uh, denominating currency that I'm working on? Okay. And then the flip side of this call option and put option thing, okay? Um, they should give you the same value. Will be um, interesting and confusing as well. Risk neutral probability, holy cow. That's like a, a parallel world coming from what? Doctor Strange kind of things, right? Um, a whole new universe is over there where the, uh, all the people are risk neutral. They don't care about the risk taking as much, okay? Um, the probability of happening some event of happening may be different, but don't get hung up onto that probability too much because this is just a mathematical exercise to make your life easier. Guess what? This risk neutral framework is also used in Black Scholes formula. Shall I take you back? Yeah, why not? Okay, Black Scholes formula. Okay, and interesting thing over here is that the discount rate that you use over here, this one, is risk-free rate. Okay, if you look at the, this, uh, the Black-Scholes formula for stock, right, you will see risk-free rate used as a discount rate, which means they are assuming risk-neutral world. Okay, of course, they have some variations in using that, um, but risk neutral framework is a very important framework to uh, understand okay so i want you to have some solid understanding of it and then uh, uh, should you have any right questions please email me to the following address over here okay and then see you and bye bye